grace, space, and pace. That is the Jaguar mantra. Here I have the 2021 Jaguar F-Pace P400 SE. It certainly has plenty of space, but does it have enough grace? And more importantly, does it have enough pace? That's what I'm here to find out and tell you more about. So my name's Cameron, this is Product Review Cars. Let's get into it. And make sure you're subscribed, hit that like button and make sure you have that notification bell turned on. Leave a comment as well because I love having a chat down there. So, I hope to see you down in the comments. Let's continue with the video. Now, apologies about the weather. It seems like the Jaguar has brought its Coventry weather with it, so it wouldn't be a week in the Jag without it being raining most of the time. I love the look of this power dome that you have here on the bonnet. It looks not just good from the outside, but also from the inside. It looks fantastic in my opinion. But also part of this bonnet design is also making these headlamps look a bit more angry. And then in these headlamps, you can see Jaguar's distinctive J in the daytime running lights and you also have some nice bright LEDs in there as well for the headlamps. There's a black exterior package fitted to this, that's why you see a bit more black and less chrome on the outside, but this also has the R Dynamic package which just makes the whole thing look more aggressive and pretty much every F-Pace will be getting that in 2021 slash 2022. So that is a big benefit and that's why you have that R Dynamic badge here on the front. Now, moving along the side, we can see we've got some little vents for airflow, smoothing it out, which looks quite cool. And then you've also got a little Jaguar as an Easter egg here in the headlamps. Along the side, we have 22 inch wheels, which are massive. These are optional and these are wrapped in a Pirelli tire. These Pirelli tires are fantastic. They're 285 millimeters in width, but they also do a really good job of gripping this pretty big SUV in the wet. I've experienced little to no traction issues and have had plenty of fun in this even driving in the rain. In there you have 380 millimeter front brakes with optional red brake calipers. So I really love this tire wheel package and brake caliper. It just looks a lot more interesting and I love the red brake calipers. Who doesn't because they're always interesting. And then around back we have some LED tail lamps which look really nice and help complement all the LED lights we saw up front. We've also got a really interesting rear boot lid design. I like how this looks. It looks aggressive and it just looks really nice and complements the front as much as it does at the back. Black Jaguar badge which looks really good as well as the black F-Pace badge as well as the black P400 badge. I like all that blacked out without the chrome to be honest it looks really really nice and then below this we have some fake exits which look a lot better than they did on the previous generation f-pace but it doesn't matter that they're fake because inside we have some real exits from the exhaust and they are an oval shape they look quite interesting and this is what they sound like from the outside <laughs> Now the boot of the Jag is pretty useful. It's got an automatic tailgate, which is nice. And in here you have a minimum of 755 liters of boot space. Fold down all these seats and you get a total of 1,804 liters. Now that's not a gargantuan amount, but it's gonna be plenty to put big suitcases in here and travel very comfortably. I can see this being useful for about four people, but once you need to carry four suitcases, it might get a little bit tricky. But lucky for you, the seats fold in a 40-20-40 split, so you can fold down that middle seat to put some extra items down the middle for extra storage space. As for the spare tire, you have a space saver. It's a massive one too, because you've got to fit 22 inch wheels. So you have a giant space saver underneath your boot floor. Oh, the interior of the F-Pace is a nice way to get away from it all. I love traveling in here, especially when it's raining. It's very cozy and very, very homely in here. The interior of this Jag is very well thought out. Instead of being a copy paste from say Range Rover or Land Rover, it really is its own interior and is a special place to be. You can see here straight away, I'm sitting in this Mars red leather with contrasting stitching and I love it. I know some people don't love this sort of red in your face leather, but it's fantastic. Jaguar also does really good attention to detail. Everything you touch and all the materials have far exceeded my expectations. I cannot find for the life of me anything in here that I'm touching that I don't really enjoy engaging with or that I'm looking at either. Even the doors way down at the bottom in the door bins, they didn't have to be nice plastic, but instead Jaguar have gone ahead and made that a nice material. So 
if you're looking at buying one of these, it's the interior that really, really sells this. It's a really nice interior, but you do have to tick some options to make it a little bit more fancy than the regular trim. In here, we have a center display here, which is curved, and I love this display. It's fantastic to engage with, and it's just so, so smooth and buttery. I love using it. The only way it's not really smooth and buttery is when you're using phone mirroring. I found Apple CarPlay when you're swiping around to be a little bit laggy, but it didn't make it unusable in any sense. So I just find myself using the normal system in here because it's just so nice to engage with and Connecting your phone is really easy and you can also speak to Siri through here It's all really nice and even the natural voice assistant in here is really good to engage with The center screen is more than what you need in here and I just love how it's integrated as well It's not stuck up on the dash. It's not trying to make the dash form around it It's just this curved display it really feels like something out of 2021 Then you've got this really cool thing which is called dynamic information which is something that comes in Jaguars and you can actually set up the dynamic drive mode and you can change what you want the engine to be the steering to be the gear shift to be the suspension to be when you go into dynamic mode which is really cool so you can customize that mode you've got a stopwatch for when you want to time the school run or when you're out on track and you can set multiple lap times and review those lap times which is really cool and then you've also got a g-force meter this car is fitted with a meridian speaker option which is fantastic Fantastic. I love this speaker system. Initially, I wasn't really taken back, but it was over time that I was really impressed with how little distortion, the amount of clarity you can get, the amount of depth in the bass, the subwoofer, and even the trebles that you can get, and the customization you can use in this system, along with how quiet it makes the cabin because it has active noise cancellation, and also phone calls sounds super crispy in here. It is ridiculous. So this Meridian sound system, I think, is worth the option if you want to go tick that. Below the screen, which is pretty much the party piece. We have some capacitive touch buttons and also some really simple controls for the climate controls. And to change the fan speed, you actually pull on these toggles and you can change the fan speed nice and easy, which I really, really like to keep this dash looking nice and clean. The capacitive buttons, I'm not sure if I'm a huge fan about because when I just wanna be tapping it, I found myself having to do one or two taps more than I would if it was just a physical button. But I say, as you get used to it, I have found less instances of that, but it was just just initially on using this car that I did have that little issue with getting those capacitive buttons to turn on. In this center cluster, we have a drive mode button which pops out and makes a very satisfying click and when you push it down, it makes a really good noise too. I love using this drive mode selector. It feels very posh. Shift is really nice. It's got this like double stitch down the middle and it's just very, very nice to use. Really easy to operate forwards and backwards and then pull down again for sport mode. And then the P button to put into park, it sounds like a mechanical keyboard. Like, that is a beautiful sound and it just really is a testament to the build quality in this car. And then we have this start engine stop button, which is really cool. It's sunk into the dash, which is all trimmed in aluminum. And then you've also got a little physical volume knob, which is really appreciated. And it's just so easy to use. This car doesn't really skip over anything that's too important. It's really, really nicely fitted out in here. It's got everything, it's got all the tech, but the one thing it's missing is physical USB ports. Yes, it does have wireless charging and it does have plenty of 12 volt sockets, three, one in the boot one in the middle and one at the front but unfortunately I just don't think that's enough I think we do need to see maybe one or two extra USB-A ports or USB-C ports littered around the cabin in front of me I have Jaguar Land Rover's digital display and it's fantastic it's customizable it gives you information like maps it will also tell you if there's a speed camera coming up and it'll give you all your media information and it will even display artwork up there which is kind of nice and yeah like I said you can have either two dials no dials one dial it is endlessly customizable and I love using this display and you can adjust the brightness it's really easy to use and it complements this center screen really nicely and then this steering wheel is probably one of the biggest highlights for me in the update it looks really nice trimmed with some aluminium and you've also got these capacitive buttons on the outside which are easy to use much easier than i found using these climate controls and then the party piece on top of this screen are these shifters which are just an absolute delight to engage with they rival alfa romeo shifters which have been in my opinion market leading for quality and feel and look in a car because i say if you're doing paddle shifters you may as well do them right which Jaguar have done them more than right. They have done absolute justice to putting paddle shifters on this car. 
and they're absolutely deserved and they're very, very, very nice to engage with. Now the back seats of the F-Pace is also one of the big reasons why you're looking at buying one of these. And I found the back seats to be fairly comfortable, which was a surprise because I do find these mid-size SUVs to be a bit hit and miss. But here, I can get nice and comfortable as five foot 11 in height. And I've got plenty of knee room to be honest for a long trip. I've got nice, thoughtful cutouts below the seats for an excellent amount of feet room and they've also got a slight raise so my feet aren't flat on the floor and I can just sink into here and feel a bit more comfortable. I also do have a little bit more vision over the top of the driver and passengers in front so I feel a bit less enclosed in this cabin and especially with this panoramic sunroof which can open in and provide more airflow to the back. This is a really, really good touch and I definitely recommend getting one of these panoramic sunroofs fitted because it just opens up the cabin a lot more because when you close that visor, the cabin closes in a bit too much for my liking. So this really helps with bringing extra light into the cabin. Now this center console has some air vents which I can adjust at the back which say Jaguar on them. There's just so many small touches in here which I can't count in this video because I've run out of time, but it's just so nice and thoughtful about the attention to detail that is put into here. There's a small shelf with some rubber put onto it so you can sort of put your phone in there if it's charging. Well, I can't recline or bring the seats forwards, but what I can do is bring down this armrest in the middle, which is quite nice. And it does do a good job of meeting up my right arm. So my left arm and my right arm are feeling relatively level. And this grip here on the door is very nice to hold. So the F-Pace range starts off at $76,244 before on roads. This one here is the P400 SE. So this one is $98,654, pretty much for that engine and a bit more standard equipment. So that brings the total price of this car plus on roads to $117,498. So you do get good peace of mind when you're buying a Jaguar F-Pace and that is because you get five years unlimited kilometer warranty, which is a improvement from when I last reviewed a Jaguar Land Rover product, which was the Defender. Back then it was three years, but now it is five years unlimited kilometer warranty. So that is very good. And I'm happy to see that on these type of cars because yes, reliability is a concern for people who are buying a Land Rover or Jaguar product. That is just an elephant in the room that has to be addressed. And I'm glad it has been partially by putting that extra warranty on there. As for ownership costs, you are looking at around $123 to fill this thing up from empty. It is an 82 liter tank and it does take petrol and it is a thirsty car. So you do have to be prepared to pay the premium if you want the better engine in the Jaguar F-Pace. Okay, so let's talk about this motor. We've got 294 kilowatts on tap and 550 Newton meters of torque. This is an inline six turbocharged unit and it's got a mild hybrid system. And I'll tell you why that's a benefit to have that mild hybrid system in just a moment. But what you don't get is amazing fuel economy. This has a combined fuel economy of 8.7 liters per 100 Ks which isn't amazing. And I've been averaging around 13.6 liters over the week. I've had this per 100 Ks, which is quite thirsty. But in saying that, if you don't want a car that's got this level of performance from a petrol motor, then you may as well look for something with a small displacement or which is like good luck for this type of vehicle or just go and buy yourself an EV. Cause unfortunately we're seeing the last of these sorts of performance motors. And this is quite a special motor too, because inline six is really what Jaguar is known for. Back to the E-types, those, those were using inline sixes and some were using V12s, but that is Jaguar's motor. So to have an inline six back into a Jaguar F-type, I'm loving it. It just feels spiritually like this is a proper Jaguar. Now, the sound you get from it as well is brilliant. I love the burbles and pops that you get on overrun and through gear changes. They're subtle, which is nice. They're not obnoxious and they are rewarding for when you want to push this car. They're not really given to you at every moment like you would find on say a car with Audi or Volkswagen's DSG, which gives you those sort of farts on upshifts or say maybe on the Jaguar F. Pace SVR, which has the V8 with plenty of burble to it. It really gets off the line really, really well. It does a claim to 100 in around 5.4 seconds, and it certainly feels a bit quicker than that because heading off the line, thanks to that mild hybrid tech, even if your car has done the automatic start stop, which in other cars is quite annoying because it takes a while to start up and then you have to get going again. In the mild hybrid cars like this, it just turns on and goes. And if thanks to that small electric motor, you just have that little gap between being able to get power from standstill, basically from zero RPM, 
filled in quite nicely. So it means minimal turbo lag and it means getting off the line is ridiculously easy in a car like this. Now you can hear in here I've got the paddles activated. I'm in sport mode, I'm in dynamic. This is one of the funnest modes to be in. These paddles are very rewarding to engage with. It's really a shame that some manufacturers go for those disgusting, tacky little plastic paddles on the back of the steering wheel. And Land Rover is guilty of this in the past. We had a Range Rover Evoque and we had to disable the paddles because they were just so not nice to engage with because these paddles are divine. And I think they're one of the best in class for not only looks, but feel and engagement. These are fantastic. And that is a major plus point for this interior. Now dynamic mode also gives you more aggressive shifts. It gives you more aggressive suspension it gives you more aggressive engine pretty much just dials the car up so you could take it either through some twisty sections which the car does a really good job of gripping or you can go ahead and head to the track using dynamic mode now if you don't want all the flavors of dynamic mode and you say if you want everything but the stiff suspension you can change that through a customizable mode in the instrument cluster but I think if you're going to dynamic mode, you should have it full fat, and that is the best way to experience it, which I've got to hear now. And it brings me onto the wheels and tires in this car. I haven't had any issues with these tires, and I have been absolutely loving the amount of grip they've been giving me, even in torrential rain and through puddles. These tires have been giving me amazing amounts of grip. And I could also probably put that down to Jaguar's all-wheel drive system, which hasn't really been intrusive, and it doesn't really cut power as aggressively as some other systems do. But this is just such a treat to drive with that inline six. This is the chassis you want this motor in. I know I had a great time in that Defender and I really, really love that engine there. But when you put it into this chassis, it just makes the whole thing just make a whole lot more sense for a performance SUV like this. And this is part of the sell for a SUV like this that you would get this inline six because it has the mild hybrid tech, which helps you get off the line quickly. But also at the top end, you're getting 294 kilowatts and then all that torque on top of it too. So it is a fantastic performance car. Now the question remains, should you buy one of these? In short, yes. And that's because you care about attention to detail. You want a performance SUV. You love the brand provenance of a brand like Jaguar and you want something that you're gonna look back on and go, hey, I also really, really enjoy driving this and it's not just a box ticking SUV. That's what the Jaguar F-Pace is. It represents a dynamic, hence the R dynamic name, SUV, it is really, really something that's quite special in terms of how it drives, how it performs, how it sounds. The interior space, again, is really special. Everything about this car really oozes luxury and it really makes you feel like you're getting into a posh vehicle rather than something that feels more utilitarian and more of a gray machine, which you can spend less to get something like that. But really, when you're spending this amount of money and you're looking at a car like this, you definitely want something like the F-Pace. Now you do have to be prepared to tick some options on that options list. So if you're okay with that, please go ahead and check out a Jaguar F-Pace because they are brilliant machines. And also this P400 motor, it is on the thirsty side. But again, if you're looking for a performance SUV, that's not something that's really at the top of your concern. So in saying that, the P400 SE Jaguar F-Pace is a brilliant car and you should definitely put this in the top three of your list if you're shopping for a mid-size SUV. It is a cracker of a car and I'm gonna sorely miss this one. Now, thank you so much for watching. My name is Cameron. You've been watching Product Review Cars. Make sure if you liked it, leave a like. If you loved it, make sure you hit the subscribe button and leave a comment below. And if you don't wanna miss out on any of our videos, make sure you hit that notification bell. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.